I'm working on tearing down the blown up uh, N52 from the X5. I took apart the cylinder head not very carefully, expecting to find some carnage up here, particularly in this number 6 cylinder. And actually everything looks perfectly fine, like it actually looks like it's in really good shape. And just to prove that this is in fact the engine that blew up, there's the extra holes. So I mean we look at this, nothing really looks bad. Alright, I don't know if this comes out on camera, but these bearings for the uh, cam here are scored. Every single one, the journals, including inside the cap on this intake cam, that's like really bad, it's super rough, it's actually getting, I think, worse as we work our way back. Let's see. So there we go. Um, Back to the original theory of the oil pump failed, where it got air locked. And that's what caused us to lose a bearing. Yeah, look at that. Oh, wow. Okay, we're at one of something here. I think we lost the oil pump. Let's see. I, mean, I can catch that with my finger through the glove. This one's definitely the worst so far. All right, we're gonna check the other cam in a second. Yeah, look at that. That's bad. That, that's horrendous, actually. So we're gonna look at this other cam that was in a tray. And I wasn't looking at it too hard. Okay, so you can see there's like some marks there, but they're visual, I don't feel anything. It's actually in pretty good shape. But this intake cam, this intake cam, that is really bad really really bad so we're gonna continue to disassemble this but i have a feeling we're gonna see something similar on the crank when we go to take it out where it's gonna be all scored and i think that's why we lost the bearings because either this sat for a long time which it did and air got in the oil system and it got air locked where i wasn't able to pump all the oil out or the oil pump itself went bad that's my current theory all right Got the intake side of the cam out. Obviously all scored up like I said before. We come over here, a couple interesting things. First of all, these bearing caps were uh, guides or whatever they are, journals. On the head side, look beautiful. Um, I don't really see any scoring or evidence of scoring in this, even though that's where the cam came out of. So far, again, the oil supply is actually looking quite good. Another interesting thing, not related to the failure, is this uh, Valtronic uh, eccentric shaft has needle bearings in it. So that's kind of cool. And I thought I would show over here. These are the Vanus solenoids that were brand new about 20,000 miles ago. So you can tell they still look great, and there's no evidence of metal or anything in them. So, it looks like the filter did its job. We'll have to take it out later. But so far, I think everything from an oil supply perspective uh, was protected, other than where it didn't have oil at all. Alright, moment of truth. We're going to take this oil filter out. I have not seen it yet. I mean, honestly, well, there's some speckles in there for sure, but there, it's not like super trash. That's kind of crazy. Ooh, okay, there we go. That looks like there's some material in there. I'll take it apart later, but there's definitely stuff in there in between the pleats, especially right there on this side. I don't know if you can see it on the camera. All right, but it looks like the filter did its job. I'm gonna stick it in this bag. All right, cylinder heads off, obviously. We can see right there, this piston is missing. We have deep scoring, and the cylinder walls look really, really bad, where the rod obviously dug in. Come over here. This one has scoring there. Looks like part of a piston ring or something. This, these bits of metal in here, I didn't add. 
So you can see that's a piece of piston ring again. This also has all kinds of bits of debris and it looks like a gouge. So let's blown it out there. Uh, you can see gouges on this one as well, right there. So gouge here, multiple gouges there. Looking down here, that one also looks like it's marked up. Come over here, more, looks like, I think piston ring. No, that might actually be a cast piece off something else and lots of debris, otherwise clean. And number one looks clean as a whistle inside, except right there, but I can't grab that line with my fingernail, so it's probably okay. Let's see if I can feel that. I can feel that mark, so that's pretty shot. And then we can look at the cylinder head itself. There's number six, valves intact, all beat up. Five, here's four, again with the gouges down here. And there's gouges up there on number five. And I think that, maybe that's okay. But there's pieces of, pieces of debris there. So, yeah, overall, definitely catastrophic failure. Um, doesn't look like there's any indication at lost timing. Uh, all the valves are there. Doesn't look like the valves hit the, the pistons or anything like that. Um, just, we lost piston number six and rod number six. Just completely gone. Again, looking like a bottom end failure. We'll see if we can see any evidence of maybe a loss of oil pressure going towards the back of the engine because I think the oil pressurizes from the front to the back. So we're gonna, if we lose oil pressure, the last cylinder is gonna be the one that probably fails. And we should see evidence of scoring really bad here, being less bad as we move to the front, just like we did on the cam. All right, so I got the oil pan loose. This is gonna be the first look I haven't seen inside yet. Okay, not too much to see yet. You can see the um, oil pump chain is still intact and on. Got a lot of carnage back there, obviously. And this is all bent up from us freeing the flywheel before, so we saw all out this section. You got some, uh, I think there's a piston ring or something there. And uh, lots of like stuff that looks like piston rings floating around inside this engine. So I'm gonna go take this uh, windage tray off, take this off, that should pop out. And we'll take the uh, oil pump off as well. Probably look inside that, see if that failed. All right, windows tray is off. One of the questions I actually have, I do not know the answer to this, is if this bluing that we see on the crank is normal. You can see it here on this cylinder number two, I think. Let's see, two, three, four, two, three, four, five, six. So yeah, this is number two. And uh, another thing to note, is this entire crank here, even without this piston there, is it does move, but it is so tight, I can't move it by hand, and all the timing stuff is gone on the front. So it's literally just the crank sitting here. You should be able to move this pretty easily by hand. Obviously, it's got more bearing problems than just that one. So, you get all these rods off, rod caps off, Pistons actually look fine as far as I can tell, but here's what happened. Like this guy, this is number two, looks fine. Number six, obviously gone, destroyed. And I keep knocking stuff around because this has been a real pain. This crank is locked up so hard. I took all the bolts out trying to uh, turn it over. I tried to turn over the crowbar, didn't have any success. And I ended up having to hit it with the mallet and I had my safety glasses on. So with that mallet right there, I had to wail on it and barely got to move enough to get these to come up here so I could get the caps off. Then when I got the number five, number five is the interesting one because as you can tell, these are the bearing shells. They're still in there, they didn't come out and then I couldn't get them out and I was prying on them with my screwdriver. I finally got this off. This is the half of the number five bearing shell until it is done. Completely done. And what's worse is I took 
that huge pry bar down there and I couldn't even get the other bearing shell, the other half of it off. You can see how stuck it was on there. It's bent, it's not even round anymore. There you go. This, I would say number five, definitely had some more rod bearing problems. And I'm going to assume this problem persisted to the main bearings, which I may not be able to get to. These right here require a thin wall socket that I do not have. So I don't know if I can get this, uh, I forgot what you call it, this mid plate off. Um, but it's safe to assume I do believe this engine died from an oiling system problem. And what's interesting is I turned the oil pump over with uh, this, the drill and I pumped oil out. So I think it's working. We can take that apart later or I might use it for another project. But I think it just had like an air pocket in it and it got air locked and then failed the oil down like back here somewhere and caused the full engine failure as a result.